Hello, 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 and welcome everyone. It is Angelic Ray coming to you at Angelic Soul 11, and I'm so excited to be here with you on this freaky Friday, y'all. You know, I get excited, right? <laughs> so, hopefully, the connection stays because I am um, out of nature and I really, really do. I want to go that way. Hmm. No, I'll go this way. I really um, wanted to just get this out there. And I want to talk a little bit about like the onk since we were talking about like the cosmic orgasm and uh, sexual energy, sensual energy. And I thought I saw... Are you... Are you a baby one? Or am I tripping out? Because I know y'all like to live there. Oh, I'm totally tripping. Okay. Oh, whatever. <laughs> um, I thought I saw one of my little beautiful bird friends here. Um, I feel it around. It must be watching me, huh? Huh. Anyway. <laughs> Hello, hello, welcome. Um, maybe I should give it some time for people to come in, right? So I do want to talk a little bit about like the Ankh energy, right? And why, you know, according to me, how I take it as like the key of life and how can you utilize the Ankh's magic and like Tantra, right? Because you know I like to go there. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit. Um, so that way, I, I mentioned it before, um, but I didn't go into detail in regards to like how to recharge your energy. Stella Blue! Do, do y'all see her? Do, do y'all see my little baby girl over there? Okay. <laughs> Making sure. Well, she always follows me anyway. So, um, okay, neither here nor there. I promise I'm not gonna get so distracted into that, right? So, um, yes, yeah, so tantric energy, the ankh, the key of life. And why do we call it the key of life? I'm just walking down to my space so that way I know once I'm there. Like, I could really jones with y'all and the service stays good. So, can you hear me well? Like, because I know I'm kind of rambling and I tend to do that. And then I ask afterwards. <laughs> so if you could just put it down in the comments. That you hear me. That'll be awesome. Let me see here. Awesome. Great, great, great. So... Getting into, and I know I tend to do this like earlier, right? Because I like, I like my evenings for me anyway. So getting into um, like Ankh energy, pretty much um, when we're talking about cosmic sexuality, cosmic orgasms, and the Ankh, um, it is a symbolic sound frequency a, um, known as the key of life as well as an, an energetic um, practice that you do so for example um, ang, ang, all create that key of life sound frequency within the mind to open and trans transform um, your present state into multi-dimensional frequencies right and so you can do this chance out loud or in your mind and you breathe through it and it'll take you into different places depending where you're at in your practice also it is a symbology of masculine and feminine energies um, equally yoked as one and that is because it is symbolizing the phallus going into the universe, right? Or the universe. And that is the divine masculine's energy going and uniting 
with the feminine's energy going into the womb and the sides being as the legs spread open if that's one way you want to look at it right some people you could also look at it as the head the arm stretched out and the body straight that's fine that definitely works out as well because we are both masculine and feminine um, beings we are androgynous beings regardless of the gender roles that we play here on earth right regardless of our flesh but getting into the specifics of how to use the ankh energy in a in a tantric way um with the phallus going into the wound here um if you saw my last live i was talking about or one of my lives i'm pretty sure i was talking about um semen retention and then i was talking about orgasm and the difference between a female orgasming versus a man orgasming. But just in case you haven't seen that video, I'm going to briefly touch up on that just a little bit so I can get to the point of how to onk that energy in, right? And so when a man ejaculates, he loses some life force energy. Whereas when a a female ejaculates she doesn't lose any life source energy in fact when a man ejaculates he is um or having an energetic orgasm as well at the same time however it is possible for a man to have an energetic orgasm without an ejaculation and vice versa for women women every time they ejaculate they have an orgasm just like men but we also can have an energetic orgasm without any form of ejaculation any type of fluid exchange right and it doesn't mean that um one orgasm is more stronger than the other um in fact it can be quite a different experience depending on where you're at in your practice as well and so you pretty much um you get intimately involved with each other it has to be intimate it has to be um very sensual and sexual and you have to have perfect love and perfect trust to really get this um down pack and when we say perfect love it doesn't necessarily mean that like um i guess scratch that perfect love perfect trust right in that energetic space where you guys are sharing the one breath um even if your breaths are a little bit off it can still definitely happen but eventually you're gonna end up getting to one breath so let me let me get into that just a little bit so that i'm not confusing anyone here so what happens is uh you guys are are men and women are together and you are sexually exchanging energies with each other and um it works when the female is having an eject um an orgasm before the man is usually how this works um and it's because of the way that the woman's body is um I want I want to say engineered right is to recharge in that sense right although she is a receiver um, the way that her cosmic orgasms work is by recharging um, the space because women can have multiple orgasms back to back um, and rejuvenate themselves and keep going where like man these mosquitoes are really trying to get me what are you doing fans oh shoot what is that squirrel i said i wasn't gonna get distracted all right we're going back into it right so <laughs> fucking yeah so a female could have multiple orgasms as one at, at once where a man you know usually he'll have um a, that orgasm especially if he's having the physical orgasm with the ejaculation and then he needs a moment to like just breathe and get back into it before he can um just have another orgasm it's gonna take another build up because he just lost life force so what happens is you allow yourselves to really train your mind and train your body 
to build up that sensual and sexual energy to really stimulate an energetic orgasm in harmony with each other with the purpose of um, recharging each other, right? With the purpose of utilizing that that orgasm in a cosmic way to manifest what it is that you want in life, right? And so the woman will... Um, have an energetic or even a physical right she can have her ejaculation it is okay she will have her orgasm first and as she is having her orgasm it is for the man to be very disciplined in his practice to hold the energy now it happens really fast but then it does happen a bit slower so what happens is as she is having her orgasm the energy shoots up to the crown of the head of the man really fast okay but the energy for the man he has to hold that in right because men are such projectors he has to hone that energy and he has to practice making keeping his focus on the breath with with his woman right so this is where the one breath comes into play um allowing for yourselves to share that breath share that intimate space with each other and as the energy of her orgasm is going into him it is now beginning to somewhat um vitalize him right so she's already getting vitalized through her orgasm because she, when a woman has an orgasm, she is tapped into that cosmic space of prosperity, abundance, and the whole universe of all, right? So she's just in that cosmic being anyways, which is why a woman can have a multiple orgasm back to back to back, right? We just naturally, once we get there, we get there and we're able to access that, right? And it takes for us to really trust our partners to allow ourselves to get there with our partners to have the orgasms that we have um, in a sense of like, not that nobody's worthy, but it's it's like saying I you're worthy of coming into all my dimensions and being in this cosmic space with me right and so that's where the orgasms happen multiple orgasms and so whether she's having one orgasm during this time or multiple orgasms he takes in that vital energy he brings it draws it into his crown as they are breathing in one breath together and the chakras are aligning in tune with each other naturally and when it reaches down towards his phallus he has to be disciplined enough to not ejaculate right away but to rather project that orgasm in which he had been vitalized more energetically with into the female all over again onking in the energy to create a cycle like a battery being recharged in both beings in both bodies right without ejaculating because the moment he ejaculates he ends the charge okay this is why the onk is the key of life because it continues that cycle to rejuvenate the masculine and feminine energies at one sacred time, sacred place. At, um, rather than it just being a person in meditation and channeling in their masculine and feminine sides, you know, and really just honing in their whole selves um, in a solo practice it's more of the the practice of a union coming together and sexually exchanging this ankh energy and and recharging each other so he holds in he holds in his semen he's allowed to have an energetic um orgasm as well with her but he cannot ejaculate yet until they they fully create the full circle once 
her energy is back into her there is gonna be multiple orgasms that tends to happen and it can last from 10 minutes to 20 minutes to even like a long amount of time it depends on the man and the woman in their practice and if a woman is just really in tune with giving that vital life source energy really easy and tapping into her her mate in that way to recharge and the man is able to constantly be recharged and have energetic um, orgasms without um, an actual ejaculation this can last for a few hours like this can last a long time um and then eventually once the man ejaculates, you know, then that recharge, uh, you know, it has done his job and he loses a little, that, that life source. But he will be so recharged, it wouldn't necessarily fully drain him in the way of him being drained had they not already rejuvenated each other. And the purpose of doing this is to do it with such intention of whatever it is that you want to manifest with each other, whether it's just to manifest good health with each other, um, alignment, right? Because as stated, this as you're breathing together and having this cosmic orgasm together, onking each other's energy into a space of, of wholeness, you guys are activating each chakra point. You guys are sharing a Merkaba um, vehicle with each other in that space to travel into multi dimensions together. And this can be in a macro or micro cosmic way that means you can literally help each other reprogram aspects of each other or aspects of self or you could even take that energy to manifest it into a certain career path into a life path um whatever it is that you want to manifest you can take that right it becomes the key of life and that song that you created with each other is so harmonious with masculine and feminine energies recharging and dancing with each other that it creates one key of life it creates an onk with each other and that energy is vitalizing both individuals does that make sense i hope i'm making sense to y'all or is there any questions I know I'm like walking around. I said I was going to stay still, but the mosquitoes was trying to get me. Little fun fact. Well, while you're there, I don't know if you hear me. This was kind of funny. But I didn't call mosquitoes mosquitoes before. I used to call them mosquito bites. I used to be like, oh, the mosquito bites are biting me. The mosquito bites are biting me. And it's like, they were laughing. They're like, um, they're mosquitoes and they're biting so it's a mosquito bite that you have but the mosquitoes are the one that's biting you and i was like oh so anyways yeah so that is what onking is and you could actually do certain chants in that space um with each other um one chant that i truly love to do during that space is ank uja seneb and that is life and prosperity and wealth and i do that in a sense of healing and bringing good health and good wealth onto all involved in my life and the lives of others um just really bringing that abundance and prosperity into that space what is that i'm a little bit like <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so pretty much <laughs> I'm going to stop getting a little bit distracted and I'm going to put myself back on this focus. So allowing yourself to onk your sexual energy in that way and allowing it to become a key of life that serves you in manifestations um, in your life and the life of your partner can really allow for you to have healthier skin, have a healthier lifestyle, healthier organs. Um, of course, you're going to need to be drinking a lot of water 
to keep your energies recharged, rejuvenating. Um, and that's another thing that I wanted to get into. Not only will you be anking ank each other's energy to recharge each other, but you are going to energetically exchange karmas now this is a yes and no it depends on everybody and where they add in their practice so it's mindfulness because the universe is meant to so the same way you can unk and recharge your energies via sex the same way you can exchange karmas now how this works is because you're having that same breath and you are energetically exchanging with each other accessing each other's chakras you are open to so many different dimensions of each other that anything that is equally matched and yoke with that space good or bad right perception is a motherfucker right perception is what you make it you are going to share that space right so what ends up happening is let's say somebody has some stuff that in their closet right that their spiritual closet that they haven't cleaned up and you don't necessarily like that stuff or you haven't really dealt with that in that way um in the same exact way as them but you give it access to you because a part of you agrees let's say it's something with anger right we all carry a spirit of anger to us. We all carry it to a different degree. Some of us are um, hold dominion over our spirits of anger, while others of us have absolutely no control over our spirits of anger. And so there it is. But we all have access to that same realm, right? We all know how to motherfucking get angry, right? So it can be as simple as somebody having extreme anger issues and because of those anger issues they naturally start to attract a certain um chaos to them and the other person's a little bit more in tune so what happens is when you get into that space you share that you share those spirits and those spirits begin to communicate with each other now if you do not hold dominion over yourself, you do not know who you are in that way as far as being able to identify these spirits, that's where the karmas can necessarily um, get into your life in a quote-unquote negative way. You also can see it coming. If you see something coming out of a certain portal from you into your life that may have been a karmic energy from your partner, so to speak, and you don't like it, rebuke that shit. Tell that shit to get the fuck up out of your space. Um, you can rebuke it. You can remove it, send it back, right? Or you can transform it. You can, not, not to say like a form of enslavement, but a form of transformation, right? You take it and you transmute the energy and you transform it into something else in a way that is it's not being neglected it's not being ignored um but rather it's able to express ex itself differently now so what happens is you could actually help your partner um heal on a different le on an energetic level right so now if you guys access that realm and you guys both agree to get into that space and this person had a lot of anger issues, it can very much be that it, they have now been subconsciously programmed through that energetic cosmic space um, to not necessarily react right away out of impulsive, impulsive anger, right? They now can pick and choose how to utilize that spirit of anger to work for them because uh, the other partner may have had such a strong dominion over those spirits um does that make sense because i might have to use another example um again it's not nobody's responsibility to forcefully go and help someone they have to be willing and all of this happens willingly for example if you know someone carries um certain entities um, or you don't necessarily know that they carry certain entities, but you still consciously, you just see these behaviors in them and you don't really like them, but you agree to sexually exchange energy with them. 
you're green to have those energies um communicate and 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 chill with you in your vibe in your space right and sometimes we don't necessarily like that sometimes it's, it, it doesn't have to be a bad thing sometimes it's like maybe a person doesn't have a lot of experience um they didn't really go through a lot of things and they end up meeting somebody who has like really good luck like this person has really good luck they have good health they have good fortune and now with you guys onking each other's energy with each other and, and connecting with each other in that way all of a sudden that good fortune is prosperous as well um prosperity is an energy that works whether it's in good health or whether it's in fear so it's really up to you how do you access um these energetic beings what frequencies do you tap into what do you entertain um and in that that is you will be recharging and giving that vital life source energy onto those spirits as well does that make sense i really hope i'm making sense to y'all <laughs> hello cutie patootie oh he's peeing i'm okay hola hola can you all hear me well Okay, yes. I'm just making sure. So, yes. So, that's the onking. And, again, you can use chants um, to amplify the energies, to direct the energies. Uh, you get, It doesn't necessarily even have to be a certain spiritual chant. It can be um, directing an intention, right? So, both of you focusing on a specific intention with one another again this intention can be um to draw in um good health it can be to draw in clients or business it can be to draw in your you know maybe you want to um have a child and maybe there was some infertility issues that was going on before so now you can draw in um hormone um hormonal balance with each other that good health draw in the spirit of your children to come in uh you know you can access this in many different ways and when he ejaculates it's best for him to ejaculate into the womb of the woman into that space to keep that seed fertile to keep that seed fertile if by any chance he happens to want to ejaculate outside of the womb again it is going to change the energies of how that manifestation works out but there's different ways of doing it whether you put it into an actual soil um you know maybe she swallows whatever just don't really want to waste all that chi vital life source energy that's full of magic it's full of magic right so it's it's going to respond differently depending on how it's ejaculated but um and the longer you are recharging each other and in that space um the more vital and potent those seeds are the more vital and potent that life source energy in that um energetic exchange is and the more rejuvenated and recharged your cells are your body is so again it's it, it'll it's called the key of life for a reason and again it is going to open up so much in the womb space of the woman and the mind space of both um where you are sharing that one um car vehicle with through that energetic exchange because now he's you're, you're both energetically recharging each other through one through orgasmic um consciousness in one space and it's just circulating with each other that it becomes like sharing one merkaba now that is just from my interpretation of of how onking sexually works i can be absolutely wrong if you have more proper information then hey share that down below i'm sure the people will like to hear 
but this is from my interpretation of that in tantra and how to utilize that in a way of creating what it is that you want to manifest via sex magic right via onking the energy and utilizing it as a key of life to serve you and your greatest potential right again if you don't want to do it in a sense of onking the energy with a partner just chanting onk is it'll give you the same frequency as om and ong and you can um access the indigenous parts of yourself the masculine and feminine parts of yourself and bring that energy to rise up with your breath of course and proper water to access that key of life to bring in your manifestations a lot a lot more faster and that is also still a tantric practice because your masculine and feminine selves are energetically dancing with each other to create that um, energetic orgasm with each other to even open up those realms of possibilities right that that the prosperous realm of the universe right that is so open to many dimensions um as long as you allow yourself to access that and it you access that through trusting yourself through honoring yourself through loving yourself even if there's parts of yourself that you felt like you didn't like so to speak um you begin to honor say okay like let me understand this a little bit more why don't i like this or where does the consciousness of me not liking this come from where is it rooted from and you go into those places with yourself you go into the shadows you go into the darkness with yourself and you start asking yourself like questions and and don't even assume that you know the answer like let the answer come to you let the spirit teach you in a sense right because sometimes we just want to take so much control that we limit our experience through having so much control but even in just submitting to ourselves and like learning from our spirits it's not to say forever stay submitted no you you it's like just to learn from it for for a moment and be the observer in that space right and then you learn and if you have to like or you choose to say all right i'm gonna have dominion over this because you're like this is just not gonna serve me and my it'll serve me period yes because it's a part of you um but it may not serve me for my highest and greatest good it might it might serve me to be a motherfucking thug for a moment you know i might have to access that little chola side of me you know what i'm saying and knock if i buck if i want to you know or and it'll serve me in that way right and and it could serve me to even be in that like warrior aspect right but if it could just serve me not in the spirit of war but in the spirit of unity and and that spirit of like just love and abundance it's like oh yes like now i can take this energy and i can i can um, utilize this spirit to work in my favor consciously or subconsciously if i so choose to say you know what i even give i give you authority to you know um take care of this situation for me and you don't even know how they're gonna take care of it subconsciously they're taking care of that shit right the fuck for you um because they they have that they have that permission you've given that permission none of your spirits can't do anything without your permission you have free will and dominion over everything right and when you utilize that um consciously you can you can use these things again to work in your favor if it's subconsciously then you know it, it can still work in your favor for sure because i've definitely seen many people um utilize energies in their favor but again it may not necessarily be for their highest and greatest good or if it is um there might still be some stuff that you know because we are forever learning we are forever growing and because of that um there's always things to constantly heal from excuse me this sun is so beautiful i love you all for watching I'm going to get off in just a moment. I just really wanted to share that information. I am going to um, save this video. Even though I know I, I was pretty like, squirrel, right? Do you have a cookie? <laughs> like super 
on, on another uh, <laughs> space, but that's okay. I actually was welcoming that today. Um, oh my goodness, you filthy animal. Do you guys, bless you, do you want to see? Hold on. How can one identify with their spirits? That's a good question. Let me see if I can flip this over real quick. Oh, I, I just, no, no, no jumping, no jumping. All right. I, yeah, I missed it. I was trying to show something, but. Whew. Okay, so we have like many spirits, right? Because we have many cells. We have um, thousands of naughties in us, right? We have thousands of nerves and organs and, um, well, cells. Let me say that, right? And the cells, they flow through the organs. We have, you know, one giant muscle. We have, you know, that is separated. It, it seemingly looks as if it's separated um, through another tissue, right? So the muscle is a spirit. The tissue is a spirit. Um, all of the, for example, oh my gosh, this was so perfect, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you this morning i was just playing around with my like the mouth right area and i swore i was like oh my god i fucking get it like you know how they say like the turtle holds the world and like the native americans now again this is just me and my own like call it imagination call it perception call it universe whatever you want to fucking call it i don't care right i'm sitting here and I'm like moving my tongue and I'm looking, observing, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, the top looks like the turtle shell. And the tongue will be the soft turtle. And the bottom will be the bottom shell. And I was like, oh my gosh. And why the natives um, said the turtle had the world on its back? because we speak our reality into existence and we have the whole world in our hekau and our words in the beginning was the word right we created light in our reality and i was like oh my gosh turtle island turtle island i swear that was me right so i was able to identify a turtle spirit that was with me right through the mouth right and it's like okay sometimes slow and steady wins the race right because being patient in what you say um, to respond rather than react, right? Sometimes we need to do that, right? Sometimes we need to just be slow with our words. And then sometimes we just need to go fast with agility uh, um, and have that agility, right? And that's okay. And that's, we need to speak fast sometimes. Sometimes you just need to make a quick yes, no, whatever it is, right? You just do that um and these are personifications of a turtle in a sense but we do this as well like in different ways right it's just a matter of how do you perceive these things right so one can say um and that's why they're so ancient right they they hold their i've been hundreds of years and this and that wealth in the beginning was the word then i'm sure the word had to come out of somewhere. So it must be old. Right? And even in the big, um, with the om, ank, ong, it has different access points in the mouth to touch each syllable, to access different realms, to access life, to access death uh, or destruction to access uh, unity and harmony and mutab uh, mutable energies, right? So, that was one way of being able to identify a spirit animal within myself, right? Because I was like, oh shit, you're like swimming. It's a motherfucking... Like, that's why in the mouth is always covered in water. Like, we have saliva in our mouth just about all the time, right? So the turtle's always swimming right and when we parse it's on land right or when we're eating it's on land right maybe that's just me right um being able to identify spirits not necessarily in that way but maybe not like knowing that it's a body part or not knowing that it's a body part um 
Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. I'm not going to sit here and act like I mastered it all because I'm still here, right? I'm still learning. Um, but when you're able to know yourself, when you're able to identify your habits, write a list. Write a list of all your characteristics, good and bad, just all your characteristics. Um even eye gestures, hand gestures, tongues. Um, for example, I always have a habit of like when I'm super focused into something or got to do something like I just bite my tongue. And I thought it was something that I stopped. But then I realized when I was recording some uh, some videos and stuff and I had to do certain asanas that I'm doing the asana. I might be doing tree pose and I'm like... And they're like, everyone's laughing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, why am I still doing this thing? You know, whatever. So then you're able to identify certain things, right? Um, but then also um, um, other, other spirits within yourself. So you could identify a happy spirit by person constantly just being happy around you. And you, you sense it. You feel it. And you're like, oh, that's the spirit of joy. That's the spirit of happiness. That's the spirit of um, fun. If there's like a lot or laughter and stuff like that. Maybe they're laughing. They're, it's a youthful spirit. It's an energetic spirit. It's a benevolent spirit. It's very joyful, very high vibrational. You're able to identify those things. Or maybe you go into a place and you feel like the vibe ain't right. And... You're like, damn, I don't know why the vibe ain't right. And you just start being observant a little bit. And then you're able to see maybe someone has a nasty attitude. Um, so, Or may, they might just be frustrated. Oh, that's the spirit of frustration. Oh, that's the spirit of conflict. Oh, that's the spirit. So you begin to identify those spirits. And then once you identify them, you can start to feel out where in you um, they exist where in your body they exist where do you feel do you feel them in a certain place are they housed in a certain place um what organs house certain spirits right to give that them that 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 luxury to exist there and if you don't like it you can you have we have choices right so you can either choose to willfully accept those spirits or you can um do what is necessary to transmute and transform right so how would you do that you identify it you see where in the body it is what foods what energies oh dirty dog hello 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 it's okay i'm so used to it i normally don't mind but I, I definitely have something to do after. So I'm like, oh, dang it. Why did I do this now? It's okay. It'll be what it's supposed to be. So, yeah. So, um, for example, if it's certain, um, certain that's super dense, you want to lighten it up right um so how can you lighten it up you can lighten it up through exercise you can lighten it up through um laughter you can lighten it up with certain foods so eating lighter foods as opposed to eating more dense foods um making it harder for your your body to digest things right it's not necessarily that dense foods is bad or anything like that um there's a time and a place for everything right so it's knowing how to pick and choose your battles and what it is that you are trying to do with yourself and um, the energies you want to access within yourself and around you again to use those spirits to work in your favor does that make sense and hola 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 to everyone who just came in um, so that's how I would say about identifying spirits is like once you really uh, know yourself um, if it seems very foreign right um you can then ask yourself okay like what characteristics does this have right because um a lustful spirit doesn't necessarily have to be like an incubus incubus or a succubi right however an incubus or a succubus definitely has a lustful spirit 
definitely does. So being able to see the extremities of these things as well. Um, what is you? What is natural to you? What isn't natural to you? Um, these things will definitely help you to identify. And hey, I mean, maybe there's other ways that you identify. How do you identify spirits around you? Because maybe there might be something that I could learn um, and, or practice and say, wait a minute. And, and what might work for me may not work for you. Right. So there's that as well, because everything is about perception. I'm just watching my dog at the same time. Yeah. Hello. 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 Um, so that's one way. Um, you may get a name. You may not get a name. Right. Um, if you get a name, even more so you can hold even more dominion over it. If you don't get a name, you can still have dominion over it because you have free will. Um, but it is definitely, um, it's going to be a little bit different. It'll be a little bit more different. Um, and then sometimes there's just spirits that surround you that you may not, you know, you might not be paying attention to identify them, so to speak. So those are like the subconscious spirits, right? Whether they're in you or just in your um, auric field, right? And as long as you continue to put a certain vibration in your aura and your universe and your reality and your intentions and everything, such a beautiful tree, my goodness. Um, just the face of it, it's definitely been through a lot. It's an older tree. Stella Blue! Um, what was I saying? The tree distracted me a little bit. And Stella Blue. Oh yeah, the identification of the spirits, um, and the subconscious spirits. And as long as you keep those intentions within yourself to that certain frequency, it can only access you as much as you allow it that access, right? As long as you allow it that access. Nothing happens to you without your permission. So even the quote-unquote bad things happen with your permission. You may not agree to it. You may not believe that you agreed to it, but you did. It did because it could only happen with your permission. That's the only way. Hello. Hi, you have two color eyes. A Dalmatian. All right, y'all. I'm done. I hope that this video helps you all. Maybe there's something that you want to try with your partner now. You want to get frisky. You want to dress up, and you want to just like, all right, baby, we're gonna breathe together. We're gonna onk some energy down with each other. We're gonna recharge each other. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do some healing or whatever. That's a form of sexual healing, right? Whatever it is that you want to access, I'm definitely going to the tree. Because this tree... I don't know if you can see the face, but... We're about to be best friends. <laughs> Alright, y'all. Peace, love, and wholeness.